Alrighty, everybody, we made it. The end of week 15 of the college football season. And what a insane week we've had. It is midnight here. I have just finished the final game that has a ranked team in it. You know, as far as play goes for the regular season. I know there's probably still some games going on right now, but those games do not matter anymore. Because all the conference championships have been set. We know who's playing who. And how we got to all these is just insanity. Let me tell you that. Um, so pay attention. Stick around. Watch the whole video this time. And, you know, we're, we're going to have some fun here tonight. So, because <laughs> it's, it's, it was a crazy day in college football. But let's start off with who's going in the other Group of five conferences, not named the Pac-12. I mean the American. Really, it's the Pac-12. That's a, that's a group of five conference at this point because I mean the Pac-12 is just that bad. But the other conferences have their have their championships set. Undefeated Buffalo will take on Ball State in the MAC championship on a Friday night. And that one's going to be fun. Jared Patterson has. Ran for a thousand yards in five games, and I'm just like, wow, crazy, crazy stuff right there. And Ball State, you know, they won with a field goal late, and then the craziest thing happened. You know, we're talking, we're talking laterals at the end of the game. One of them was a forward lateral, so it, so the play didn't even count at the end, and. The, Players were rushing the field for Ball State and Western Michigan because it was a de facto division championship game, you know, to see who would go to the MAC championship. And, I mean, it was just crazy. The ESPN Plus broadcast just decided to go completely out, you know, like, like immediately after the game ended, and it was just crazy stuff right there. So, yeah, so it will be Buffalo. I'm not sure if they're going to be ranked or not coming into this week um, in the CFP's top 25, but I can assure you, it's going to be one hell of a game in the MAC championship. It's always fun. In the Mountain West, San Jose State met Nevada in a in a matchup. You know, of, you know, two teams that were fighting for a spot in the Mountain West championship game. San Jose State, they are still undefeated. Very surprised. They match, you know, they they are a six win team. Very surprising stuff right there. You know, I mean that is just crazy. They will take on Boise State. I don't know when that game will actually take place. That game has not had been finalized yet. It should be finalized, you know, who's going to who's going to, you know, have that game and when, but it's not been completely finalized yet. I don't know why. And it should be, you know, right after the Big Ten Championship before the Virginia Villanova college basketball game. But who knows? Again, I don't know how that's gonna work, but we'll find out later on this week. And in the conference USA, you know, Marshall, because Florida Atlantic lost, you know, earlier that week, Marshall was able to get to the CUSA Championship game where they will be taking on UAB, who has repeated as the West Division champions for the third year in a row. Sorry to UTSA. You know, it was, I mean, UAB's only played like five or six games, and UTSA's played like 10. But it was ultimately, you know, the Conference USA's tiebreakers are kind of dumb. But you know what? It's fine. It's really fine. It's fine. And of course, you know, all, most of these others have been set. The Ohio State thing, that was no longer an issue. We know it's Ohio State, Northwestern, the Big Ten. We know Iowa State, Oklahoma, Big 12. We know Alabama, Florida, in the SEC. We know Clemson, Notre Dame, obviously, in the ACC. And Cincinnati, Tulsa, they didn't get the play, obviously, this week. Nor did Texas a and nor did Texas. They didn't get the play at all this week um, so there was that uh, and, and the American Championship is set too so 
Cincinnati Tulsa. It'll be at Cincinnati. It's rather unfortunate that Tulsa didn't get to host the game, but that's okay. Say okay. You can you, Tulsa can go to a New Year's Six Bowl potentially if they beat Cincinnati. Uh, I'm not gonna talk and speculate about conference championships and stuff just yet, honestly, because you know, uh, again, I'll talk about that on Monday. But now that we settle ourselves in, let's talk about Week 15. First things first, Northwestern put up a clinic on the ground against Illinois. 28 to 10, two runners went over 140 yards. Absolutely dominant performance by the Wildcats. They are riding high, heading into the Big Ten Championship. As for Georgia, I don't know if they'll get to play their game next week because, I mean, it's... I believe they're supposed to play Vanderbilt next week. But JT Daniels has this offense looking good against the Missouri team that shouldn't even have been ranked in the top 25. We all knew this. And Georgia put up 615 yards of offense on Missouri. Just spanked them by 35. It was not close. You know, speaking of not close, how about that Crimson Tide offense? Mac Jones didn't even do anything. He didn't need to do anything. It was all Devontae Smith. A kickoff return for a touchdown really set the momentum up. You know, it was 3-3 for a little bit, and then Alabama put on a clinic. 49 straight points. Najee Harris went into the end zone a couple of times, too. And Alabama, undefeated. It's going to be fun against Florida uh, for them, potentially, because they just put the beat down on Arkansas. So, what about the Pac-12? Well... Washington, Oregon got canceled. And by virtue of that, Washington gets to go represent the North in the Pac-12 championship. But Washington has issues with Corona Chan, and she is fierce. Also, canceled like a couple hours before the game even started, Washington State Cal. Pac-12, we got a problem here, buddy. Hey, you remember those, um, those, that you know, that, that, Second place in the North Division versus second place in the South Division. You know, those types of games, those seeding games or whatever they're called. Yeah, they haven't been announced. They were supposed to be announced, and they haven't been announced yet. I don't know why. Doesn't make any sense. But yeah, Colorado had a chance to make it to the Pac-12 championship. And they needed some help with USC, but... Colorado did themselves no favors. They were up 21 to 10. You know, Brendan Rice, Jerry Rice's son, had two touchdowns in this game. But Utah ran it up and down the field on Colorado and scored 28 unanswered and put the beat down on them. And thus, USC will take on Washington potentially in the Pac 12 championship. Either Washington or Oregon. And, and speaking of USC, they struggled with Chip Kelly and Dorian Thompson Robinson, who I've loved to watch over the past couple of years, and the UCLA Bruins. 43-38, USC barely gets the W against the Bruins. Barely. We're talking barely. Because, I mean, UCLA had this game in the palm of their hands. They had a lead of 12 or more in this game. And it was just not meant to be. They blew it. They really blew it, you know, and it just does not make any sense whatsoever. Chip Kelly, I'm thinking, oh, well, this, this might be the time, you know. Chip Kelly finally has the talent and stuff that he needs to get UCLA up to a contender, but no. USC got the W. Clay Helton, and USC are undefeated. And here's the stupid thing. Y'all remember ESPN's FPI, right? Yeah, I don't know where in the world it's thinking – you know, A, USC has a chance to slip into the college football playoff. That's probably not happening. Pac-12 champion is going to the Fiesta Bowl, probably. That's probably going to happen. So, there's that. And also late, obviously, the game I just finished, BYU-San Diego State. BYU gets the W. Zach Wilson concludes his regular season along with the rest of the guys out there in Mormon town, Mormon country, out there at BYU, you know. And, I mean, congrats to BYU on a great season. It's rather unfortunate they didn't get to go undefeated, but, hey, 
that is perfectly okay. I hope they go somewhere nice for the bowl game. Uh, I mean, just strong defensive performance, but still very strong. There was at least three or four times they stopped San Diego State on fourth down. Just absolutely nice. I mean, Zach Wilson had a pretty touchdown pass in that game as well. So, man, you know, I haven't talked about the other team, the team that beat them yet. I, I forgot to mention them in the preview. Coastal Carolina, who's still ranked 13 right now, but that is going to change this week, obviously, because of some upsets, but we'll talk about those. They had to come back late, you know, against Troy, 45 seconds. They, they took only 45 seconds to, you know, come back from a three-point deficit and beat Troy. Good for them. They are still undefeated. They won 12 straight games heading into their big-time rematch with Louisiana Oh, man, that is going to be fun. It's a shame. It really is a shame that I don't think I'll be able to see this game. It really is. This is gonna, that's going to be one hell of a matchup right there. I'm pretty sure I'll get to see some highlights or something. Because, I mean, come on now. That is going to be fun. Um, we move on here. We talk about the um, 3.30 slate. Again, games were canceled left and right. So, there's not as much talk about this time around but uh we got some stuff to talk about still oklahoma state you know stoner got three touchdowns 200 yards receiving but there's no more chuba hubbard he was dealing with injuries now he's just said i'm not gonna play anymore this year i mean to be completely honest the fact that i said he was going to be you know in the heisman discussion all the way back in september and now he's just not even doing anything productive for Oklahoma State. You know, it's just like, wow. It's it's how quick it could be, you know, for a Heisman contender to just fall out like that and turn into nothing because, I mean, Chuba Hubbard really didn't do anything for his draft stock this year. He probably shouldn't have stayed, you know, now, now that his performance looks, you know, terrible this year. As we keep on going here, Iowa still, you know, they still look very good. The Hawkeyes do, and they just beat down Wisconsin. We're talking it's a beat down, 28-7, big-time matchup right there, you know, for Wisconsin. They were, you know, Wisconsin's very overrated. It's a very overrated team, I'm telling you. It was just, it was inevitable at this point. So, Biggest matchup at, you know, the 3-30-2-30 time slot, not named the Army-Navy game, which we'll talk about, of course, was North Carolina-Miami. It could have, it could potentially be an Orange Bowl berth on the line for both of these teams, and Miami just completely got destroyed. We're talking, they got, they got an ass whooped. It was a beating. It was destruction. 500 yards on the ground for North Carolina. Carter and Williams just combined for 500 yards. Five touchdowns. Sam Howell threw in a couple touchdowns as well. And Miami just could not do anything to stop the run. 700 yards of total offense for the Tar Heels. And North Carolina finishes their season, you know, as it stands, you know, with a with three losses, two of them were, well, one of them was really really bad to Florida State. The other one was, I think, to Virginia Tech or something. No, it was to yeah, it was to Virginia, I think, or something like that. And then the other one's obviously the Notre Dame. But yeah, Miami is completely out of discussion now for you know New Year's Six bowls and stuff like that. North Carolina could potentially have a hand in getting to you know maybe the Orange Bowl or something like that. And, I mean, Miami's just out of the discussion and stuff like that. So, nothing it's nothing could prepare, you know, Miami fans for anything other than just absolute embarrassment. This was embarrassing by the Hurricanes. Just disgusting. You only put up 26, and you got blown out. By, you, you, you let 62 points get put up on you. Pretty disgusting. But the biggest upset of the day, obviously, was LSU and Florida. 
you know, Max Johnson, freshman for LSU, freshman quarterback. You know, Coach O was angry, you know, last week with that Texas A&M game. Very angry. And obviously his anger got through to the Tigers because LSU did just enough. You know, Kyle Trask still had four touchdowns in this game, but LSU did just enough on defense. They picked him off a couple times. They kept the ball away from Trask, and the fog really helped, too. You know, the fog really helped in this case, too. But the stupidest play of this game, and the one that changed the tide for LSU to get the game-winning field goal and for Florida to miss theirs, their field goal to tie the game, was a thrown cleat. Uh, I'm serious. A Florida defender. I, I forgot his name already, but he's he's gonna he's gonna be feeling the after effects of throwing a cleat and getting a unsportsmanlike penalty called on him. You know, Mr. Wilson, I believe. You know, you don't throw cleats. Obviously, you don't just throw someone else's cleat like that. It doesn't make any sense. It was. You know, Florida had a chance to get off the field, and they blew it. They blew it with a with a thrown cleat. In college football playoff, you can throw all that out the window for the Gators. So, last but certainly not least, the game that originally, that originally was supposed to be by itself today was the Army Navy game from West Point for the first time in a long time, about 70 years, you know, 70, 80 years that it's been in West Point. And, well, very defensive, foggy game, mostly for Army. This was a big, big win for the Black Knights, and they have won four out of their last five against Navy. And, you know, they get to play Air Force next week. With the Commander in Chief's trophy as well, and did the bowl game, the Independence Bowl, right after that. But man, what a defensive performance by Army today! I'm telling you, there was just so many mistakes that made that Navy made. They could not run the ball when they needed to. You know, the Naval Academy could not just they couldn't run. They had they had our line in a quarterback. They could use three quarterbacks this season. Navy has, and our line was the one that got it for the day, and Tyler for Army was the fourth starting quarterback for the for the Black Knights, so a lot of topsy turviness as far as quarterbacks go, but Army did enough on offense, I'm telling you, man, it was just great to see the flex bone in its purest form, you know, not a lot of triple options, a lot of QB keeps. You know, a lot of, you know, a couple of load options thrown up in there and a couple of fullback dives thrown up in there as well. And there were some big passes, big plays made by Army's defense, especially that fumble and the safety that they got on Navy because Navy ran a, a, a wingback reverse play that just went totally unprepared. That was just a terrible play, god-awful play. It didn't make any sense. You know, because Navy was only down 10 at that point. You know, but, I mean, come on. It was just it was just rough for the midshipmen today. And I'm glad to have seen this game once again for the ninth year in a row. And hopefully it will be back in Philadelphia next year. And so we don't have to, you know, be on the campus, you know, by the Hudson River and stuff like that for, you know, like it was this year <laughs> but yeah so what have we learned another long well this isn't going to be another long video today uh, I can already imagine but we've learned a lot of things Florida is out of the playoff discussion Miami is probably out of New Year's Six consideration and it gives a opportunity even though it is absolutely undeserved for Iowa State to have an opportunity at the college football playoff. It gives undefeated Cincinnati even more of a chance. 
think they need a little they need a lot of help Cincinnati does Iowa State does too Texas A&M not so much help but they need help I think the benchmark will be cut off at Cincinnati um, the whole Georgia Florida thing really doesn't even matter anymore because Florida and Georgia have two losses Oklahoma d- despite the fact that they performed well early in the season they're out of the discussion as well Indiana's only you know big Big claim to fame was losing to Ohio State by seven points. The Wisconsin win doesn't look very pretty now. It really doesn't. And I wonder what in the world the Big Ten's, you know, what their, you know, cross-division second place, third place, fourth place games are going to look like as well. I'm sure those will be announced soon as well. But we know, you know, all the games and stuff like that for, you know, this for this conference championship weekend and it is going to be one hell of a show let me tell you that going to be one hell of a week you know we got top 25 matchups all over the place and it's going to be a crazy saturday i'm i will admit that and i don't know how i'm going to balance all this out because there's a lot at noon there's there's only one game at three and then there's the two to to you know finish it off at night so there you have it, everybody. Hope you guys stayed to the end. Stick around because, you know, there, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened. Oh, and one more thing. I believe we do have another team that has been selected to a bowl. As we know, Army got accepted to the Independence Bowl. UCF, I think I said last week, they were going to the Boca Raton Bowl. Now SMU will be going to the Frisco Bowl. You know, and that will be on a Saturday night on ESPN2 instead of ESPN. Probably because of basketball or something like that. But yeah, there you have it, everybody. Big Boy Variety saying so long. See you in the next video. And that will be, you know, probably Monday. And I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.